Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Israel Weke Lubogo. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and seekers of wisdom. Today, a fitting title for this speech could be navigating the philosophical labyrinth. Lessons from the art of war for today and for tomorrow. This title escapulates the essence of the discourse, emphasizing the exploration of timeless wisdom and its relevance in our modern world. In the timeless tapestry of human existence, where are the threads of conquest, competition, and conflict intervene with the aspirations for harmony, success, and peace, there exists a profound manuscript a manual for the art of existence itself. It is a work that transcends epochs and civilizations, a treasure trove of insight that beacons us to delve deep into the very essence of our humanity. This manuscript, my dear audience, is none other than The Art of War by the legendary Sun Tzu. Today, we embark on a philosophical journey a journey that seeks not only to unravel the strategic genius of ancient China's foremost military stage, but to transcend the boundaries of mere warfare. We are summoned to explore the profound truths concealed within its pages, truths that resonate far beyond the battle rounds of antiquity and extend their profound tendrils into the hearts of our contemporary world. As we embark on this voyage of thought, and contemplation. We shall navigate to the intricacies of strategy, adaptability, leadership, and the very essence of human nature. We shall traverse the train of deception and morality, learning how to wield these twin-edged swords with wisdom and discernment. In the pages of this revered text, we shall discover not just a guide to conquering external adversaries, but a roadmap to conquering our innermost fears and doubts. The essence of the art of war is not confined to the waging of wars alone. Rather, it is a treatise on the art of living, a testament to the human spirit's boundless capacity for ingenuity and resilience. In its wisdom, we find not only a means to overcome external obstacles, but a path towards self-mastery and the cultivation of a harmonious existence. So, my fellow travelers in this intellectual odyssey, prepare to embark on a journey that transcends the temporal confines of history, reaching into the depths of philosophy, strategy, and the profound intricacies of the human soul. As we delve into the profound teachings of San Su's masterpiece, we shall uncover not just the art of war, but the art of being, the art of evolving, and the art of flourishing in a vowed, perpetually in motion. Welcome to our journey through the philosophical labyrinth of the art of war. Let's discuss the art of war chronologically, covering its authorship, relevance throughout history, and its enduring lessons for today and for the future. Let's start with authorship and origin. The art of war is traditionally attributed to Sun Tzu, a military strategist from ancient China. The exact time of his life is debated, but he is believed to have lived around the 5th century BCE. The book consists of 13 chapters, each addressing different aspects of warfare, strategy and tactics. It's essential to note that the book's authorship has been a subject of debate, with some scholars questioning whether Sun Tzu was a single person or a collective name of several authors. Historical relevance. Throughout Chinese history, the art of war was used as a fundamental military and strategic guide. It played a significant role in the success of various Chinese dynasties and was highly influential in shaping 
Chinese military throughout. Over time, the book's influence spread beyond China and became known worldwide. Relevance in modern times. The art of war has transcended its original military context and found applications in various fields. Some key lessons and principles from the book that remain relevant today include strategy and planning. The book emphasizes the importance of careful planning, understanding the environment and adapting strategies accordingly. These principles are valuable in business strategy, where companies analyze markets and competition before making decisions. Deception and misdirection. Sun Tzu advocates the use of deception to confuse and weaken the enemy. In the modern world, this concept is applied in fields like espionage and cybersecurity to outmaneuver adversaries. Flexibility and adaptability. The idea of adapting to changing circumstances is crucial in contemporary context. Whether in politics or technology, the ability to adjust strategies as situations evolve is essential for success. Examples of application. Business. Many successful business leaders, such as Jack Welsh and, Billy, and Bill Belichick, have drawn inspiration from the art of war. They have applied its principles to corporate strategy and market competition, as well as team management. Market strategy. Military leaders worldwide continue to study the book's principles, applying them to modern warfare, including strategies for asymmetrical warfare and counterinsurgency. Politics. Political strategists often consider Sun Tzu's teachings when devising campaign strategies and negotiation tactics. Conflict resolution and negotiation. The book provides insights in negotiation strategies, emphasizing the importance of understanding both your own strengths and weaknesses and those of your adversaries. These principles are invaluable in diplomacy and international relationships where nations seek peaceful solutions to conflicts. An example, the use of diplomatic negotiations and understanding the balance of power between nations in resolving conflicts, such as nuclear disarmament talks or trade negotiations. Leadership and decision-making. Sun Tzu's work delves into the qualities of effective leadership, including the need for decisiveness, moral authority, and the ability to inspire and lead by example. These leadership traits remain essential in contemporary leadership roles, whether in politics, business, or other fields. An example, successful leaders like Steve Jobs and Nelson Mandela have been known to incorporate Sassu's leadership principles into their approaches. Cyber security and information wherefore. In a digital age, the concept of warfare has, in, has expanded to include cyber security and information warfare. The idea of outsmarting the adversary and protecting one's vulnerabilities is directly applicable to these modern domains. An example, cybersecurity experts use deception tactics and adaptability to protect computer networks and systems from cyber attacks. Ethical considerations. While the art of war primarily focuses on strategy and tactics, it also contains wisdom, but ethics and the human dimension of conflict. It underscores the importance of moral conduct and the consequences of unethical actions, 
which remain pertinent in contemporary discussions about warfare and ethics in business politics. <coughs> Example, debates on ethics of military intervention or the ethical behavior of corporations align with a book's consideration of moral conduct. Future adaptability. As the world continues to evolve, the adaptability and timeless wisdom of the art of war make it an enduring source of guidance. The principles it impacts, the principles it impacts can be applied to emerging challenges and unforeseen scenarios, making it a valuable resource for leaders and strategists in an ever-changing world. An example, the book's principles may contain to be relevant as new domains of conflict and competition emerge, such as space exploration and advanced artificial intelligence. The Art of War by Sun Tzu transcends its historical origins to offer enduring lessons in strategy, leadership, and conflict resolution that apply to a wide range of modern contexts. Its adaptability and continued relevance make it a timeless resource for those seeking to navigate the complexities of the present and the challenges of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, here's a summary. The Art of War by Sun Tzu, while originally a military treatise, has transcended its historical context and remains relevant today in various fields. Its enduring lessons on strategy, planning, adaptability, and deception continue to shape decision-making and provide valuable insights for the present and for the future. Ladies and gentlemen, as we draw our philosophical exploration of the art of war to its conclusion, let us be guided by the wisdom that has endured through millennia. In the closing moments of this discourse, let us reflect upon some of the timeless quotes from Samsu's masterpiece and the invaluable lessons they bestow upon us today. Samsu once declared, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. This profound maximum underscores the significance of diplomacy, negotiation, and the importance of seeking peaceful resolutions to conflicts in our contemporary world. It reminds us that the true victory lies not in the annihilation of our adversaries, but in the perseverance of harmony and cooperation. Another gem for the ancient sage reminds us, opportunities multiply as they are seized. In our fast paced and ever evolving society, this lesson resonates deeply. It encourages us to recognize opportunities in the midst of challenges and to seize them with unwavering determination. In the realm of business, innovation and personal growth, the ability to preserve and act upon opportunities is a key to progress. Sansu's counsel to know thyself, know thy enemy, a thousand battles, a thousand victories, emphasizes the importance of self-awareness and a profound understanding of the world around us. In the realm of leadership, politics, and even personal relationships, this lesson echoes as a call to profound empathy, deep insight, and the capacity to navigate the complicities of human interaction. As we stand on the cusp of tomorrow, let us remember that the art of war is not merely a relic of the past, but a beacon guiding us toward a future where wisdom, strategy, and integrity coalesce to shape our destinies. Its teachings transcend the battlefield to illuminate the path of wisdom in our modern world. In our pursuit of success, whether on the battlefield of business, the diplomacy of nations, or the inner struggle for personal growth, let us carry thus the legacy of Sansu's wisdom. Let us strive to subdue adversity with grace, 
seize opportunities with vigor and understand ourselves others with profound empathy. In conclusion, as we part ways today, may the lessons of the art of war serve as a constant reminder that the art of living, strategizing and thriving is an unending journey, a journey that transcends time and circumstance. Let us navigate this journey with the wisdom of the ages and a knowledge that in the words of Sun Tzu, the greatest victory is that which requires no battle. Thank you for embarking on this profound exploration and may your paths be guided by the enduring wisdom of the ancients. I remain Israel Waike Lubogo and thank you for listening to me. I shall take my leave.